Okay, in the next set of videos, we are going to look at this thing called Bernoulli's equation. Now, this might seem familiar to you. Bernoulli's equation is one of the most important equations in fluid dynamics. And I want to extend our discussion on things that we've already been studying, uh, things like pressure and flow rate, uh, and see how we can figure out what Bernoulli's equation is and how to derive it. And then after this set of videos, we can go and do a few examples uh, using this equation right here. So Bernoulli's equation, which I have written here, is nothing more than a very specific case pertaining to fluids of this general statement of energy conservation. So this statement right here, you might be familiar with already, and that is that the total change in kinetic energy plus the total change in potential energy of a system is equal to the external work being applied to that system. So that external work is being done onto the system by external forces. So in this next set of videos, I want to take this statement right here, which is the general case, and derive from it Bernoulli's equation, which is a specific case for fluid dynamics. Now on the side here, I want to define a couple terms. Actually, I want to define all three terms in the general statement of energy conservation. So first off is work external. So work external is any work done by external forces. Now this external word in this definition is very important. We're not looking at forces internal to the system. We're looking at forces external to that system. And if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. In a few minutes, I'm going to draw a diagram and hopefully that diagram will explain the difference between external forces and internal forces. Now the delta K term, which is the change in total kinetic energy, you might know as 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity at that point. And for that delta U term, that is the change in potential energy, and more specifically, the change in gravitational potential energy. And you might know it as mgh. And in our case, this is going to be m g times y2 minus m g y1. So again, this is the potential, the gravitational potential energy at a point 2 uh, minus m g y or m g h of a point 1, where again, m is the mass, g is the gravitational constant, and y is the distance from some datum up to that point. So let's go back to this equation right here. This equation really states that the change in total kinetic energy plus the change in total potential energy is equal to this external work. Now, if there was no external work being applied to the system, in other words, W external was equal to zero, then the energy in this system will remain the same. Now, this abides by the statement of energy conservation, and that is energy in a system is constant. It cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. So again, if there was no external work being applied, this kinetic energy and potential energy, the sum of those two energies will remain the same. The only thing that can happen in that system is that you can have kinetic energy being transformed into potential energy, or you could have potential energy being transformed into kinetic energy or some combination of the two. But the important fact there is that that energy will not be destroyed or created. It just changes form within that system. OK, so now let's draw that diagram that I mentioned a few minutes ago so we can understand this external work. So imagine you have a pipe that starts somewhere down here and then it ends up somewhere over here on the right. Now, this pipe has fluid flowing inside of it. And the direction of the fluid is to the right. So this is the fluid flow. So for now, we can make it pretty easy and just assume that the liquid inside of this flow tube or this flow is something like water. And the system that we're going to study this kinetic and potential energy and the external forces being applied or the external work being done on that system is just going to be a small segment of this entire flow. In other words, let's just define our system to be this very small section right here. So this is just a small section within this larger flow 
that we are going to study the potential and the kinetic energy as well as the external work being applied and we're going to use that system and this general statement of energy conservation to come up with Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so let's start drawing that out. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to draw a graph so we have some sense of direction. We can set up a coordinate system here and this is the x-axis which is horizontal. This is the y-axis which is vertical and I'm going to draw that same tube here. And this flow tube is just a small section of this larger flow that we had up here, so this very large flow. We just cut a small section of this flow and I drew it down here because this is what we're going to study. This is going to be our system for coming up with Bernoulli's equation. And this is where we're gonna study the energy analysis. So we're going to apply this general statement of energy conservation to this tiny piece of the system or this flow tube and this is going to help us derive Bernoulli's equation. So I'll do that in the next video. We'll start looking at this diagram. However, I do want to note a couple things. First is that the flow is still moving to the right in this system as it is for this entire giant pipe up here. The second is that I've drawn these two ends at two different elevations, and these are just general elevation. I'm not gonna give numbers to them because really the energy of conserve or the conservation of energy applies to really any elevation. It just looks like here at point one, it is lower than point two. Now in the grand scheme of things for the entire equation, that doesn't really matter. And you could certainly do this derivation if I had drawn point two at the same level as point one or even lower. But to keep it as general as possible, point one is going to be here at y1 and point two is going to be here at y2. And finally, we're going to study this flow at a very, very brief snapshot in time. So the amount of time that has passed while this flow is going up the system is going to be very, very small. So our time is really gonna be in increments of delta t. Okay, so I'll leave things there. In the next video, I wanna talk about work being done on this system. We're gonna start driving some variables and start labeling things. And we're gonna figure out where our external forces are. And those external forces are forces that are caused by the external fluid that is acting on our small system right here. So this fluid that we cut out, there's forces there induced by pressure for sure. And there's also forces on the left and the right. And those forces on the left and the right are the external forces that I'm talking about uh, for this flow tube or this flow system. So we'll get to all that in the next video. I will see you then.